Hey guys, welcome back to Sophisti Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I wanted to do something a little bit more springy, a little bit more vibrant. So I decided to do a pastel watercolor geometric cake. So there is no painting experience needed, and if so this sounds interesting, stick around. We'll get right to it. We'll get started with paneling our cake with fondant. Now, you need to stretch out your fondant, knead it, and condition it with some shortening until it gets to be that stretchy consistency. Then go ahead and roll out a disc to cover the top of the cake. Now my house was pretty cold, so you can tell that it was a little bit of a struggle to get it to roll out. I just had to use a little bit more elbow grease to get it the thickness that I needed. Um, even with conditioning it, it just wanted to seize back up again because it was so cold, so cold. So I just lifted that up onto the top of my cake and I'd put a little shortening on top of that cake to uh, get it to stick. Put a disc on top with some cornstarch on it and then flip it on top of its, on its uh, top. That way you can just, as you can see I did there, cut away that excess fondant and you get a nice crisp corner. And then we're gonna go ahead and roll out the fondant to wrap around the cake. Now you do not have to use fondant for this design. You can watercolor on buttercream. Um, I just like to have a little bit more control over my buttercream or my um, watercolor. So I prefer to do it on fondant, but it's not necessary. It would be the same, you'd do it the same way. Now we just rolled out this fondant to about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch thickness. And I had already measured out the circumference and the height. So I knew how long and how tall I needed this piece of fondant to be. And I always add on an extra inch or so onto both of those, just to allow for a little, a little leeway. You can cut off excess. It's harder to get it to stretch if it's not the right size. So I went ahead and I coated the, the buttercream. The, the crumb coat was buttercream and a little bit of shortening again. You could just spray it with water if you prefer. And I had let the panel sit for about 10 minutes on the counter, just to firm up enough so that I could lift it, with, lift it without it stretching and pulling out of shape. And then wrap it around, make sure it's secured, and then I cut off that excess piece, kind of like you do wallpaper, if anybody knows about installing wallpaper. I guess it has made a comeback, so people probably know more than they used to. You just wrap one side on top of the other, cut a line through both, and then you remove the excess fondant from underneath and the extra piece from on top, and then you have a nice smooth um, piece of fondant that, that both ends butt up to each other really nicely. And then smooth that out just so that you have, kind of get rid of that line a little bit. To make the geometric pattern, I just rolled snakes out of my fondant. Now, I would suggest if you have a clay extruder that you use just for cake purposes, I would suggest doing that. That'd be a lot easier, but mine was at work. So I had to do this the old fashioned way. I just lined those all up so that they keep their shape because they're gonna firm up a little bit before I get to them. And I had popped this cake in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes so that that fondant set up a little bit to make it a little easier to cut off that extra piece off the top. If it is firmed up, it's so much easier. Now, everybody, don't do what I'm doing here and use your hand as a guide. <laughs> this is where injuries happen. <laughs> I have a finger that has no feeling in it to um, push that, that home, that it can be dangerous. But um, yeah, if it's, <laughs> I sound so stupid. If it is set up enough, it is very easy to get cut off that extra. Now I'm just using my fondant smoother to remove any air bubbles and to just kind of smooth out where all these pieces butt up to each other. Now those are the colors that I was using and I just, to make the watercolor, that's what we're doing now, making the watercolor. I just use a drop of color in each of the little bowls and add some Everclear. You wanna make this thin enough and translucent enough like a watercolor would be. You don't want it to be too deep because then it wouldn't be watercolor. You just have splotches of color. So, um, yeah, there are the different colors on a, water, on a paper towel just to show you the depth of color that I got. Now you just load up your brush and just dab it on the cake. If it drips, that's okay. Like that right there, it's okay. This is watercolor. 
this has no rhyme or reason, this is how you want it to look. You will see me go, I, at this point, I go and get a paper towel and just dab off the excess. Don't panic, it's okay. This is where no experience necessary comes into play. You are just dabbing the color on. It's very simple and remove the excess. And I like with the watercolor where you can see those little edge lines where the color is a little bit more concentrated. I think that looks really neat. And you can only really get that with a watercolor. And just make sure you get your entire cake covered. And once I got it covered, I went ahead and I just let it set up at, in, at you know, at, in the air, in the room temperature is what I'm trying to say. You could put it in the fridge if you want, but that would cause more condensation. I wanted it to set up at room temperature. Just, and dry. Really that's all you're wanting it to do is dry so that you can attach these pieces without affecting the watercolor. Because I am using a paintbrush with some more water to get these strips of fondant to stick. And you don't want to remove that color too much. You're going to, to some extent, remove some of the color. But if you're putting your fondant pieces right over the top of where you use that paintbrush, you're never going to see it. Now just continue this throughout your entire cake. I did not have a thought out plan. I just kind of attached pieces where it seemed to make sense to me. Now I'm using a little gold luster dust with some Everclear mixed into a paint consistency to paint those pieces gold. Now if you wanted to, you don't have to, if you wanted to, you could add some gold, some tan, even some brown to this fondant. If you want your gold to be a little bit more, what's the word, a little bit more depth to it. it that can bring out a little bit more shine if you have a base tone underneath it in that fondant that's not just white. But since this was a pastel cake with a, some pattern from the watercolor, I didn't think it would matter too much. So you're just going to go ahead and paint this color on on all your rolled up pieces of fondant. Now you could go back and do a second coat of the gold if you want to, but I find if you get the consistency of this paint right the first time, you really don't have to. It has to be in between too thick and too thin, obviously. If it's too thin, it's gonna be streaky. If it's too thick, it's gonna be clumpy. So as you do this with experience, you'll kind of know where that, where that perfect spot is. Now I wasn't sure how I wanted to finish off this cake. So I just went ahead and I used some silk flowers that I had on hand that matched the color scheme. You could do some kind of a, a geometric topper if you want to with fondant with some Tylos in it. Um, time did not allow for me to do that this time. I, uh, I try to do a lot in two days. I try to get two cakes done in two days and it, it can be a, a lot. So sometimes I don't get to finish these off exactly the way I'd like to, but that's okay. That's why I have these silk flowers on hand so that I can get the finishing touches on there and still make it look good. And I just went ahead and I had put some buttercream on the cake, a good dollop of buttercream to get all these flowers to stick into. You could stick straws in if you want to and then stick your flowers in, that works fine too. So there you have it, my pastel watercolor cake with a geometric pattern and some silk flowers. And you'll notice that the leaves, I did go back and I added some gold paint to those as well. I just didn't get that on film but you could leave them green, that would be just as pretty. 
So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.